everyone say, there is joy in Jesus. There is joy in Jesus. I received a testimony from Imelda, and I think she might be sharing on Monday. She says, uh, I came into the meeting expecting a miracle from God. I felt like my heart was dead and I couldn't feel any love from God and from people. I struggled with abandonment and rejection growing up. A few days before the meeting, God highlighted that I had anger and bitterness in my heart. I repented. When the prayer helpers prayed for me, I experienced a burning sensation around my heart, my ears and hands. Then I exploded into uncontrollable laughter. I had a joy I couldn't explain. That night, the next three nights after, I've had the best uninterrupted sleep in a long time. I thank God for healing me. You know, there is joy in Jesus. When you look at someone under the joy of God, you, you can think, well, what's going on in them? It's not so much that something is happening in them. It's that joy is in God. Joy begins with God. When If someone rejects joy, oh, I don't like this laughter thing, you're rejecting an attribute of God. Zephaniah 3.17 says, The Lord your God in your midst, the Mighty One, will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. Joy begins with God. Every good and perfect gift comes from above, from the Father of lights, with whom there is no shadow or variation. Joy begins with God. If you are in Jesus, it should be a joy-filled life. Hallelujah. You know, joy is something that the Holy Spirit produces. In Galatians 5.22, joy is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. But the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy. Hallelujah. Joy is in the anointing oil of Jesus Christ. In uh, Psalm 45 verse 7, it says, you love righteousness and hate wickedness, talking about Jesus. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of joy, the oil of gladness, more than your companions. So when you find Jesus, you will find true joy. Jesus said in Matthew 13, 44, Again, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found, which a man found and hid, and for joy over it, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Jesus is the fountain of joy that wells up within us. Jesus said in John 4:14, 4, "Whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never thirst." but the water that I will give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. Jesus is joy in us. John 15, 11, Jesus said, These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. Hallelujah. You know, with God, the whole dimensions of joy or layer upon layer of joy. Did you know that joy comes with the double blessing? <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, when you think about it, when God blesses someone, there should be joy, right? Well, I, I was looking today and I saw something I never saw before, that joy comes with a double blessing. Isaiah 61, 7. Instead of your shame, you shall have double honor. I mean, think of that lovely lady, Hannah, 87 years old, wearing nappies. 
And now the joy that she has being free of nappies. Amen. Praise God. If you think that's great, give Jesus a, a wave. Amen. Instead of your shame shall have, you shall have double honor. And instead of confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess double. Everlasting joy shall be theirs. I want the double blessing and the double joy. Amen. Anyone else want the double blessing? <laughs> Hallelujah. Only a couple of you. <laughs> Praise God. Yes, I want the double blessing and I want the joy that goes with it. Praise God. You know, there are wells, the Bible says in Isaiah 12 verse 2, there's wells of salvation. Yeah, Jesus is the Savior. When you come to him, you will drink of the wells of salvation. Isaiah 12 2, Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. Afraid, For Yah, the Lord, is my strength and song. He also has become my salvation. Therefore, with joy... Everyone say joy. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. You know, in this joy there is divine healing. Proverbs 17, 28, 22 says, A merry heart does good like medicine. You know, the joy of Jesus is divine medicine. Hallelujah. God gives us his joy that anointing will break the yoke. Hallelujah. Bring us out of demonic bondage. Psalm 30 verse 11. You have turned for me my morning into dancing. Look at Riley dancing away tonight. Anyone excited for Riley? Amen. Praise God. You have turned my morning, my fear, my shame into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and clothed me with gladness. To the end that my glory may sing praise to you and not be silent. O Lord my God, I will give thanks to you forever. Hallelujah. Have you ever gone to a church and the, and the worship was like dead? Come on, anyone done that? <laughs> gone to church and the worship was no joy. Did you know in the Bible when you praise God, it's supposed to be done with joy? <laughs> That would be a revelation for some churches. Praise God. Isaiah 61.3 Console those who mourn in Zion to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning. There's an oil of joy. Jesus' garments are anointed with the oil of joy. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. In Isaiah 35.10, Come to Zion with singing, with everlasting joy on their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness. You know, in the church today, much of a church, there is a lack of high praise. The Bible talks about high praise. Because when the Holy Spirit is not moving in power, you can't create an atmosphere of high praise. High praise is when people are so excited. They'll clap, they'll dance, they'll rejoice because of what God is doing. You can't fake high praise. It's just not possible. You know, you can have all sorts of stuff and, and it all looks good and so on. But when you go into high praise, I remember many years ago, it must be maybe 25, 30 years ago, I did one of, one of the first healing meetings I ever had. And the Spirit of God fell upon people. And at the back of the room, at the end of the meeting, people were just standing there and singing and praising God. There was no worship thing. There was, it all finished. But people just wanted to praise the Lord. Praise and joy go together. When the Holy Spirit visits us, there shall be joy. People's bondage is 
broken. People's sickness is gone. People repent of their sin and experience the wells of salvation, the forgiveness of God, having peace with God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus is wonderful, isn't he? I remember I was in a church years ago preaching and this this person was screaming their heads off, you know, and uh, and this man came up after me and he was like ashen white with, uh, you know, he's like in shock. And he said to me, because God had opened this guy's eyes, and he said to me, I saw that woman screaming and I saw the demon coming out of her and she ran to the door of a church and the demon left the church. Hallelujah. Someone say, praise God. Hallelujah. Isn't God good? Praise God. Demon screaming, running out of church. Hallelujah. You know, joy is a promise to those who are thirsty. If you are thirsty for God, and you're tired of pain and torment and condemnation and sin, there's a promise to those who are thirsty. Revelations 21.6 And he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. Are you thirsty today? You know, this joy... This anointing, this healing is for those who thirst for God, who desire him. Amen. You know, the joy of Jesus is supernatural. You know, someone, someone will say, well, I'm, I'm really happy because I got a new, jo- new job. I'm really happy because I bought a car. I'm really happy because of this. But, you know, that's more like a, a human contentment often based on material things. But when Jesus comes, he brings heavenly joy. He said, These things I've spoken to you, that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. The Bible describes this joy as an exceeding joy. Jude one twenty four to present you faultless before the presence of his of his glory, with exceeding joy. One Peter one eight says that it is inexpressible joy. He says though now you do not see him yet believing you rejoice with joy inexpressible, full of glory. Everyone say glory, hallelujah. This is a joy that doesn't depend on whether your life is going well or not, whether there's money in the bank or not. This is a joy that is established in heaven. 2 Corinthians 8, 1. Moreover, brethren, we make known to you the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia, that in great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded in the riches of their liberality. Even though they were in poverty, they were in affliction, yet they had this supernatural joy of Jesus. Hallelujah. Isaiah 41, 18 says that rivers shall flow in dry places. Praise God. You know, when Jesus touches you, he'll bring living water, life, joy, refreshment into our lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But you know... Religion, and if you the root word of religion, litio, from from which we get the word litigation, the root word of religion is law. Religious people are always about rules: what you have to do, what you don't do, and so on. They're religious. They're legalistic. Religion is dead. Jesus Christ fulfilled the law on the cross to set us free to dance, to rejoice, to be happy, to be free of the law. Hallelujah. A a life of grace. Praise God. Jesus said in Matthew 23, 27, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like whitewashed tombs, which indeed appear beautiful outwardly, but inside 
are full of dead men's bones and all uncleanliness. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, don't get stuck with what is dead. Don't get stuck with what is dead. Focus on Jesus and you will keep your joy. There are people who are full of bitterness, who have, who have got real issues in their life, who are demonized, and they want to steal your joy and life. Jesus said, let the dead bury their own dead, but you come and follow me. Hallelujah. You, you hear what I'm talking about? You know someone who's like that? You know, there's death all around them. All they do is criticize people. They're full of anger, bitterness, gossip. Let the dead bury their own dead. But let us follow Jesus with joy. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Just put your hand on your, on your chest and say, I am going to keep my joy in Jesus Christ. No dead man's going to steal it. Hallelujah. No dead religion's going to steal my joy. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. You know, because the Bible says that he has gone before us, it says uh, that I have made, he has made his footsteps our pathway. So God has gone before us. So when you look at the future, don't look at it with fear, confusion, doubt, anxiety, and so on. The Bible says that because of the hope within us, because of faith, because faith is a substance of hope, we move forward with joy. Perhaps the greatest example of this is that when it says that Jesus approached Jerusalem with joy just before his death in Hebrews. For the joy that was set before him he despised the shame. He knew that glory was coming. Don't live in fear about the future. Look at the future and give him praise and thanksgiving. Why don't you lift your hands right now and thank God for your future. Thank him that he, you have a good future. Thank him that the goodness of God has been laid up in your life and you have nothing to be afraid of. Amen. You know, Jesus said, that when per people persecute you, they exclude you, they revile you, they cast out your name as evil for Jesus' sake, for the Son of Man's sake, he says this. When everything's going bad, he says this. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy. Amen? Leap for joy, for indeed your reward is great in heaven. Keep your eye on heaven. Forward, forward with joy. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. I just want to say it's a great joy to see what Jesus is doing in people's lives. A man with possible cancer in his, in his liver being healed, you know, and uh, uh, just all the, the uh, what was his name? Ashton, I think, with the, the neck brace, the neck collar. And he's no longer wearing it. You know, it, it is it's just full of joy, you know. You, you, you go to some people and it's all misery and whinging, complaining, and, oh, this and that's going to happen, you know. And they've got a real spirit of depression. You want to just shake it off you. Amen. You know, we can draw from the wells of salvation. Praise God. 